What's up, everybody? This is Zombie Mike coming to you from the kitchen, interestingly enough. And we're going to be doing a special reading of Fallout Equestria. Since it's their one-year anniversary, I figured, why not? <clears throat> Introduction. Once upon a time, in the magical land of Equestria, there came an era when the ideals of friendship gave way to greed, selfishness, paranoia, and a jealous reaping of dwindling space and natural resources. Lands took up arms against their neighbors. The end of the world occurred much as we had predicted. The world was plunged into an abyss of balefire and dark magic. The details are trivial and pointless. The reasons, as always, purely our own. The world was nearly wiped clean of life. A great cleansing. A magical spark struck by pony hooves quickly raged out of control. Mega spells rained from the skies. Entire lands were swallowed in flames and fell beneath the boiling oceans. Pony kind was almost extinguished, their spirits becoming part of the ambient radiation that blanketed the lands. A quiet darkness fell across the world. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue for another bloody chapter in pony history. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as stables. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except for those in Stable 2. For on that fateful day, when Spellfire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Stable 2 swung closed and never reopened. All right, that was your Fallout Equestria introduction. Uh, let's go ahead and go straight to the prologue so we can get started on the actual chapters. Prologue of Pit Bucks and Cutie Marks. If I'm going to tell you about the adventure of my life, explain how I got to this place with these people and why I did what I'm going to do next. I should probably start by explaining a little bit about pit bucks. What is a pit buck? A pit buck is a device worn on a foreleg just above the hoof, issued to every pony in a stable when they become old enough to start work. A blending of unicorn pony magic and science, your pit buck will be keep a constant measure of your health and even help administer healing pulses and other medicine track and organize everything in your saddle packs, assist in repairs, and keep all manner of notes and maps available at hoof tap. Plus, it allows you to listen to the stable broadcast whenever you like, as it can tune into and decrypt just about any radio frequency. And that's not all. A pony's pit buck generates EFS, that's eyes forward sparkle, that will indicate direction and help gauge whether the ponies or creatures around you are hostile. And, perhaps most impressively, a pit buck can magically aid you in a fight for brief periods of time through the use of SATS, that's Stable Tech Arcade Targeting Spell. Oh, a feature not to be forgotten, it can keep track of the location of tagged objects or people, including the wares of other pit bucks. So if a pony somehow got lost, don't ask me how you get lost in stable, but it does happen on occasion, then any pony who knew the lost pony's tag could find them instantly. It can even be made to glow like a lamp. So yes, pit bucks really are a testament to unicorn pony arcane science. And yes, having a pit buck is a big advantage. So with how wonderful and miraculous all that just sounded, it's hard to impress upon ponies who never lived in a stable just how ordinary, how pedestrian a pit buck was in the eyes of the ponies living in stable too. And why I was disappointed to have one as my cutie mark. Every pony in stable two had a pit buck. All that stuff I mentioned? Most ponies don't even use half of that. They just used it to tune into the stable broadcast, listen to the sweet, sweet voice of Velvet Remedy in the evenings, or the latest school singing competitions during the day. The stable had two soccer leagues, one which allowed SATS and one which prohibited it. Otherwise, most ponies paid their pit bucks almost no attention at all. The Overmayor issues each pony their own pit buck on the day of their cutie mark party. Usually a day or two after you get the mark on your flanks that tells every pony what makes you special. 
what you're destined to be good at. Once it shows, the Overmare knows what work to assign you. You know your place in the stable. So, no, I was not thrilled that what made me special was something that every pony had, which was a lot like being told I wasn't special at all. Sure, getting a pit buck as my cute or I could have meant I was destined to become an awesome pit buck repair filly or something. But in reality, it was just like getting a cutie mark of a cutie mark. <sighs> Didn't help that I was the last pony to get her cutie mark. Not surprising in retrospect. Kinda tough to find what you're supposed to be good at when you're supposed to be good at something you don't even get until you found what you're supposed to be good at. So I tried everything. I even tried to invent new things. As a unicorn pony myself, my innate magics allow me a level of fine manipulation that earth ponies don't enjoy. Any pony can hold a key in their teeth and open a lock, but using multiple tools in a very delicate operation? That requires precision levitation. So I decided to learn to pick locks with a bobby pin and screwdriver. Now I was even getting pretty good at it. Unfortunately, it didn't get me my cutie mark. It just got me into trouble. I even, to my humiliation, went through the CAT, that's the cutie mark aptitude test, in the hopes it would guide me to what made me special. But no, my CAT was utterly average, with only marginally higher scores in a couple of areas, indicating that I might be suited either as a pit buck technician or a loyalty inspector. That's two options, I should note, that were even less impressive when you consider that it was generally expected that unicorn ponies would either go into technical or administrative work. That is, except the unicorn ponies who are natural artists, like a Velvet Remedy. As I said before, our inherent magic allows us sort of fine manipulation that technical work demands. Likewise, the Overmare and her government were always unicorn ponies. It is the Overmare's unicorn magic, after all, that creates the false sunlight used to grow our underground apple orchard. And while our apples might not look like those beautiful red things in the old books, they are what keep us alive. It was only because they let me try my hooves at both positions that I gained access to a bit bug before receiving my own. Otherwise, I might never have gotten my cutie mark. Oh, my name is Little Pip. Go figure. I was given the name because I was the youngest and smallest, and even my mother had the good sense not to call me Pipsqueak. Not that I don't love her, but when a Philly's Q mark is a glass of hard apple cider. Anyway, funny how names like that turn out sometimes. Pleased to meet you. Here's my story. Alright, there is your prologue. We're going to go ahead and start chapter one in the next video. So, until then, this is Zombie Mike saying hallelujah. I obviously need a better sign-off phrase. Catch you later.